Alan Stratton from Mads Wood Turns. For my next entry to the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge, I'm going to use a Sputnik Sea Urchin shell. This is from a sea urchin, all the spines are gone, but the little nubs are still there. It's hollow, it's been treated with a little glue to help stabilize it. And a little more of my apricot. It's a nice, very dense wood at this point. Almost dry, but dry enough for this. If you have a video camera and want to enter the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge, shoot yourself making an ornament, upload it to YouTube, let me know, I'll add it to the challenge. Let's have some fun. First order of business is to reinforce the sea urchin shell. My wife painted the inside of the shell with three coats of white glue. Kathleen Duncan from our club uses Mod Podge both inside and outside the shell. Others say to fill the shell with foam, but that's way too messy for me. I can't resolve how much foam to put in the shell, how to seal the bottom hole, how to avoid film spilling out of the top hole onto the shell, will the foam crack the shell open, so no, I don't use foam. But I do sand the upper and lower hole in the shell round and smooth. Some use a Dremel for this task, I use a tapered piece of wood mounted to my lathe. Sounded down a couple points near the bottom hole to avoid conflict with the bottom finial joint, but in retrospect this was a waste of time since I designed the finial to enter a cove where the shell bottom contacted the finial. Then off to the races. First I roughed out the blank. I had mounted the blank slightly off-center to reduce the amount of punky sapwood in favor of solid heartwood. It was slightly harder to rough out, but not bad. Then turn a tenon tube on the bottom and mount it to a chuck. The blank was barely big enough to fit the small jaws of my scroll chuck, but it fit well enough. Then back to trimming it to a rough diameter with a large bowl gouge. Then to decide how much to have in the top finial and the bottom finial. I tried for a two to one ratio between the bottom to the top. That's almost the golden mean ratio. For this ornament, I wanted a fairly long icicle finial on the bottom. I used my built-in calipers, three or four fingers for the top finial, and three times two, three or four fingers for the bottom finial, plus some allowance for the shell, top waist and bottom waist, and then adjust if I need to. First most critical point is where the top finial comes up through the shell. All of the top finial must pass through the top shell hole, but I have to leave a shoulder just below the inside surface on the shell on which the shell will rest. Just below the shoulder, the wood must be small enough to fit the larger bottom shell hole. Below the shell, anything is fair game. Whatever finial size looks good, but to me the bottom finial needs to be on the smaller side. It's a matter of tool a little, check the size, tool a little more, check the size, and rinse and repeat. If I goof, then the finial just gets a little shorter. First I check with the calipers, later I tr only trust the shell itself, but to fit the shell I have to reduce the portion that will be inside the shell. It's the only part where the fit is critical. When I get close, I switch to square nose tool for fine control. Whatever you do, don't force the shell because it will split. Don't ask me how I know. Once the shell fits, I reduce the bulk of the bottom tenon but left enough to be stable while I turn the top finial. Then focus on the top finial. First turn, sand, and finish. Prime tool here was a medium spindle gouge. Before finishing the top of the finial, I drilled a small hole for the, fan for the hanger then parted it off and refinished it. With the top completed, it was time to focus on the bottom finial. I used a rubber stopper drilled out to help stabilize the wood. I like finials with a nice clear point at the top of the finial. However, this is a Christmas ornament and I have to consider which of my grandchildren might want to play with it. With this in mind, I made the finial ends big and rounded. Now I just had to consider the audience. A little more tooling, work it down gradually on the bottom finial, start making the bottom point. I will leave it big and round, but with a nice taper as it goes to the bottom bead. A little more sanding, finishing to keep her. So please join with Carl Jacobson and myself for the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. If you have a wood turning project you'd like me to try, please let me know. I may give it a try. Meanwhile, please like this video and add your comments below.
Thanks.